since I've done my first video showing we were in Revelation, Re Revelation 18, I've had many come forward saying I am wrong. And I pointed out, you're not meant to see this until God's appointed witnesses come forward and that you don't know what you don't know because it has been sealed up just as stated in many places. But I will cover only Daniel chapter 12 verse 4 here because of its extreme relevance of these times. <clears throat> Since I made my video Coronavirus Explained, I've had many say, these are the signs of the beginning of sorrows as stated in Matthew 24. I will show this has come and gone and further proving with scripture, it is Revelation 18. <clears throat> Before I start, I want to say to those, I do, I do not rebuke you for making this cl these claims because you are at least in the word which is important. So I begin with the beginning of sorrows in Matthew chapter 24. Let's look at verse 2. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things, to his apostles. Jesus saying to even his own apostles, you are not to see these events, referring to the sorrows. He then begins to explain the sorrows in the code, in parables, as he does in most things, and, and he explains why he does this, again going back to Matthew chapter 13. I won't cover everything, but only enough to show the sorrows have already occurred, and, and give only a few examples. But there are many more than I will point out that you can find for yourselves. So go to Matthew 24, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So with that piece of scripture, look up James Warren Jones, otherwise known as Jim Jones. This was the guy many years ago that had the Christian cult, cult that poisoned 900 of his Christian followers. And he claimed to be Christ. You can also look up David Koresh of the Branch Davidians. He also claimed to be Christ. But the best example is Adolf Hitler, who killed millions of Jews in the name of Christ out of spite because the Jews are God's chosen people. Then going to Matthew 24, verse 11, many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. This is a reiteration to the latter but has more reference to the many subsects of Christianity claiming their deciphering of the word is the true meaning as opposed to the word itself and what it actually states. So these false prophets, these ministers who want to decipher the word instead of pointing out exactly what it says, this is what this verse is referring to. And you can see there's been many. Now we go to verse 17. Let who, him who is on the housetop 
not come down to take anything out of his house. I will emphasize this because of its specificity and because it it has been in our more recent past events. Look at all the tsunamis that have occurred where people had to flee to their rooftops, just as stated. But the main one that I want to point out is Hurricane Katrina from 2005 that made worldwide news of people on the rooftops that couldn't come down and had to be rescued from their rooftops. That was 15 years ago and prophesied exactly by Jesus and the word of sorrows, Matthew 24. These were the sorrows. If you're still not convinced, let's go to verse 20. But pray ye fight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So take a look to see if this was also foretold. Go back to 1815, when Napoleon was de defeated by the French because he marched on them in the winter months. This was one of the biggest wars that had occurred in our history and was one of the sorrows. If that's still not enough, go back as recently as 1945, when Russia defeated Germany because Germany marched on them in the winter. Again, it was foretold. A well-known fact of history, both Napoleon and Hitler were both defeated because because of the fact that they attacked in the winter months. Now let's look at attacks on the Sabbath days foretold. Look how many times Israel has been attacked on the Sabbath. Too many times to even count. It has happened so many times that it's literally a part of the Palestinian strategy and other strategy to attack them on the Sabbath. So again, this has all been foretold and you see the tribulation and things that have occurred with Palestine. They stay in a state of punishment because they continue to act in these ways. So see, all was foretold by the word and the sorrows have already occurred. Several major volcanic eruptions and earthquakes that also cause tsunamis and fleeing to the, to the rooftops, which brings you back to verse 17. And all of these, can you can look these up, just the several that have occurred just within the last hundred years. There's been several major cataclysmic earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions just within the last hundred years. And then you might go for, further uh, and, and ask about pestilence and famine. I say to you, the bubonic plague of the mid-1300s and the Spanish flu of the early 1900s. Both completely decimated the livestock and the crops, creating famine, and the plagues themselves killed hundreds of millions of people. Not millions, but hundreds of millions. Then there is the entire continent of Africa that has constant plague of disease, diseases like HIV. That's just one, just HIV that killed 3 million Africans in the year 2001 alone. That's just in that one year it killed 3, and that's one plague. 
in one year killed three million Africans. Again, all has already happened as prophesied in the sorrows. I want to go to verse 15 now because it is most important. It says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. And then in parentheses, who so, who so readeth, comma, let him understand, colon, close parentheses. There is who, World Health Organization, mentioned again, abomination of desolation of the holy place. So I refer you back. To 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4 that I pointed out in my last video of who World Health Organization named again I reiterate who opposeth and exalts himself against God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple proclaiming to be God. Now, for my grammatical language enemies, I already know you will try, so I will stop you now by pointing out that who is commonly known as an inter inter interrogative word, therefore would be followed by inter interrogation point, otherwise known as a question mark. Neither verses have a question mark, so the only rule that would apply would be that who is used to represent a noun or pronoun and a name. I already covered who, named in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 14 in my last video, so I will cover Matthew 24 verse 15, naming who. Remember, in this chapter, Jesus is explaining to his apostles that no one, not even they, are to know the signs because they are sealed up and explain, is explaining that Daniel, the chosen prophet of his time, was even told to seal these words because who so readeth? So who studies the scripture also in hopes of learning God's plan. Then it's separated with a comma to notate a separation, uh, separate independent clause, which is the statement, let him understand, and ends with a colon, to show who and him are separate, but that him as Daniel is told to seal up because who readeth. So for my grammatic enemies, you see, I've, I've been given the wisdom to defeat you. So don't even, don't try, don't waste your time. I will now elaborate on Daniel and why he is important and why who is named in Revelation with him or, or why why who is named in relation to Daniel and why is also named in Revelation chapter 18. For this I point out Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9. The thing that hath been is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is nothing new under the sun. So things that have occurred before will occur again is basically a, a general understanding of what this means. That what's been done in, in this again, this goes, you can find this in Luke uh, and in Matthew. And I've pointed pointed this out. Uh, it, it's in several places in the Bible. And I've pointed it out in my other videos. So now, Daniel is known as a prophet of his time because he... D 
defeated Satan and his works of his time by exposing them. This is accepted by Jews, Christians, and Muslims that he is a, a prophet. Absolute. There's no arguing it. And all three, the Christians, Jews, and Muslims all agree this is so. And this was so because he defeated Satan. He was God's chosen prophet in his time that defeated Satan's work. But we don't know much about this. But we, we have a brief story about this. Because it was so sealed up. And it states he was told to do this because it would would be again, just as Ecclesiastes says. It would be again as it was before because Satan is always at work. So what do we know of Daniel and his works? The story of King Nebuchadnezzar and the false idol, the fiery furnace, that Daniel exposed was Satan's work and we also know that it was some type of portal or gate because an angel appeared in it to protect and save Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were thrown in and sacrificed to this false god and fiery furnace. Now, that's as far as I'll go Aside from saying very soon, I will prove without question this false idol, this fiery furnace, has been rebuilt. And not just one, but a second is being built because Satan is not chancing just having one this time like he did with Daniel. But this is also why God will appoint two prophets this time as stated in Revelations chapter 11. Now this may sound outlandish but I can and will without question prove this and prove it in line with scripture with the word. A few other pieces of scripture I want to point out proving this is Revelations 18. Look at Revelation 18, verse 17. As it speaks of its riches, of Babylon's riches in trade coming to a halt. Specifically mentioning ships. And this is exactly what is occurring in China's economy. And the biggest headlines being about the ships. Which include airships, airplanes, and cruise ships. All collapsing. They're all staying away from China, just as stated in chapter 18, Revelations 18. Also, in verse 4, telling all God's people to leave or come out of her, and again, this is exactly what you're seeing. All the other countries, all the people that can get out of China are getting out as quickly as possible, exactly in line with the scripture of chapter 18, just as I pointed out in my very first video. And this is just further affirmation of the word and time that I said it was. So, remember 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, and what it says. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is God. And of course, this goes back to Satan's pride. And who, it states clearly, very, very clearly, in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, that who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is God. Then look at Psalms... 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You are with me. 
Your rod and staff, they comfort me. That's your main point. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. Now you look at the medicine symbol that I've already showed you. The symbol of medicine, which is the, the rod of Asclepius, god of medicine, symbol of medicine. Uh, which, you know, again, I'm not an artist, but if you look at uh, online at the picture... What this shows is the serpent actually constricting the rod or the staff. And again, Psalms 23, he is the rod and the staff. His rod and staff comforts. So this is the serpent constricting the rod and the staff. Again, this is him his pride exalting himself above all that is God, shrewing himself to be God, just as stated. And then, if you want to go further, go to Mark chapter 14, verse 23 and 24. When Jesus gave the Holy Grail to his apostles to drink, and that is, he points out that it is his blood to drink of his blood and that this made us the blood of his blood now you go back to the symbol of pharmacy this is the serpent constricting the holy grail and looking down into it and you can interpret it interpret it as he is spitting his poison into the grail which contained the blood of Christ. Again, exalting himself above all that is God. And again, this is the symbol of pharmacy. This is your medicine and your pharmaceuticals. So, <clears throat> that was him showing that he's poisoning the blood of Christ, which we are the blood of his blood, just as it states. And again, from that point, you go to WHO, the World Health Organization, and their symbol, the earth. All that is God, all of his creation, the serpent constricting the staff is exalted above all that is created, circled with the laurel wreath, which is the... the Acknowledgement of victory. All of this, everybody can look up on their own. Fact check me. So again, the scripture points it out. You know, exalting himself above God and above all that is God. But I want to reiterate, you weren't, were not meant to know these things until God's chosen time. With that, I say to you, fact check me, look at the scripture, and you will see now the veil is being lifted. And please share this with everyone and stay subscribed, because if you're not entirely convinced yet, you absolutely will be by the next few videos, because they will reveal even more than the others. Things that no one else has ever found in our time, lost secrets that prove he is the word and the word is with him. I'm going to close this video. Uh, Y'all please try to share this with everyone cause, because I've exposed the World Health Organization. YouTube's desperately trying to block me. They've taken me out of any kind of loops. So again, please share this with everyone. And I want to say God bless you all.